Hello and welcome back to Great British Biking Adventures. As you probably already know, we're making our way around the British coastline on our motorcycle. If you like what we're doing and want to keep up with future videos, please like and subscribe. We really like to see and respond to your comments, so don't be shy, but please be polite. So this is Ramsgate Harbour. What a lovely approach down to the harbour. Like most British coastal settlements, Ramsgate began as a fishing and farming hamlet. Ramsgate Harbour was built between 1750 and 1850. It was a chief embarkation point both during the Napoleonic Wars and for the Dunkirk evacuation in 1940. The architect, A.W. Pugin, lived in Ramsgate and, when he was not busy designing more famous buildings like the Houses of Parliament, he built several important buildings here, including St. Augustine's Church, the Grange, St. Augustine's Abbey and the Granville Hotel. The artist Vincent van Gogh, or Van Gogh, however you want to pronounce it, moved to Ramsgate in April 1876 at age 23. He worked as a maths and French teacher at a local school and in return was provided with lodging at 11 Spencer Square. Well known for being a depressive and taking his own life at age 37, it seems Van Gogh's happiest times were at Ramsgate. In May 1876, he wrote, These are really happy days, the ones I'm spending here, day after day. Long before he became a painter of the works he is best known for, Van Gogh made a sketch of the seafront from the school's bay window. Yeah, down onto the seafront now at Ramsgate, looking around the harbour. And now we're exploring a sandy beach. Absolutely delightful place, this and Deal. Right little gems. Ramsgate was also a favourite destination of the young Queen Victoria in the 1820s and 1830s, and Karl Marx in the 1870s. His daughter lived here. Many of the residents have migrated from London for economic reasons. The HS1 railway that was built to provide a fast route for the Channel Tunnel has been a boon for the town, as it has for all East Kent since opening in 2007. Not a seaside cafe in sight. Some serious sea walling or whatever, embankment or reinforcements of some kind. During the Second World War, a network of deep shelter tunnels linking an old railway tunnel provided an air raid shelter for 60,000 people. An 1863 guide describes Ransgate thus. It's impossible to speak too favourably of this first-rate town. Its glorious sands, its bathing, its hotels, libraries, churches, etc, etc. Not forgetting its bracing climate. The streets of Ramsgate are well paved or macadamed and brilliantly lighted with gas. Those were the days when gas lighting was something that helped us see more clearly. We think this is broad stairs, which is basically the tip of England on the east side near Margate. Lots of windmills out there. Nice. Doing a bit of one way around Broadstairs. Oliver Prostate, blue plaque there. Don't know the name. Maybe I should. I know it sounded like prostate, 
but it's Oliver Postgate, and I was right, I should know him. He was an animator, puppeteer and writer. Still don't know who I'm on about? Well, I can almost guarantee you'll know some of his works. Bagpuss, Noggin the Nog, Ivor the Engine and the Clangers. The blue plaque marks the nursing home where he lived out his days. The Sussex coast was great, but we were ready to leave the busy mini metropolises by the sea, and Kent didn't disappoint. The northern Kent coast is less rugged and barren than the south, but it has charm. Perhaps with the exception of Margate, the places are more seaside towns than resorts. Along the northeast tip that encompasses Ramsgate, Broadstairs, Margate, Westgate on Sea and Birchington on Sea, there's almost a continuous coast road from which we got to see the numerous bays and a return to sandy beaches. This area has a lot of interesting history and places to visit, such as the Ramsgate Tunnels, Undercliff Walks, the Spitfire and Hurricane Museum and Charles Dickens Association with the area. Sit back and enjoy the ride along this delightful coast road. This is Westgate on Sea, right round the tip of the east coast, well a bit further round from the tip. We're a long way from home and we're looking at the North Sea. Westgate on Sea looks very nice. This has been quite a day. It may not be completely obvious, but these last four episodes that you have watched have actually all been the same day's ride. When we left Norman's Bay before 8 this morning, I don't think we realised just how much we would see. Just to remind you, and whet your appetite if you haven't watched previous episodes, we have travelled some really lovely quiet tracks right next to the beach, and some great main roads that have hugged the bays. We have enjoyed passing through some interesting towns 
such as Hastings, Folkestone, Dover and Ramsgate. We have learnt about the Romney Marshes and the resident's private estate at Sandwich. But the best part of the day has to be visiting Dungeness. What a place! I think it's safe to say we are now ready to set up camp, have some tea and get our heads down. We have done 125 miles today, but tomorrow we travel double that. That's a long ride in the saddle, but we're up for it and we are still camping. This will be our fifth night camping. Our daughter gave us two nights under canvas, so we have beaten her expectations and we aren't chucking the towel in yet. Do join us next time as we navigate our way around the Thames Estuary and its islands.